beautiful very nice talk sir um so i'm starting the interview session now um sir my first question to you is that uh, you are uh, quite a successful researcher having achieved so much at a, at a relatively young age uh, what was your experience like what things did you face uh, when you built up your career and could you please tell it to your young uh, people what made the difference in my career is nabg okay uh, so i did uh, my bsc and msc from madurai kamraj uh, it was an affiliated college to madurai kamraj university mm -hmm. and during my msc uh, final year uh, for this uh, msc dissertation program i came to nabg okay to join dr manoj prashad's lab Uh, to be frank that was the first uh, time i'm hearing that there is an exam called csir net which has to be qualified for getting into phd in such institute <laughs> at the final year of my msc so that was the kind of awareness we had in the southern district of tamil nadu <laughs> then uh, yeah, it was dr charulata uh, who i uh, explained to me like i mean what are all the uh, uh, exams that has to be qualified for doing phd in such mm -hmm. a reputed institute so and so forth then i went back to tamil nadu then i attempted once and then i thought like you know it's not going to work for me so i'll better go to a different uh, field but then i received a call from dr manoj prasad uh, sometime he just called to you know uh, to know what i'm doing right now then he has told like i mean why are you giving up uh, i can take you for phd in my own lab since you are already a trainee you know the lab well you know the institute well you just qualify that exam and come and it was his word that made the difference i qualified uh, csr net twice and then i told him that sir now i have qualified can i come then he said like immediately come <laughs> then i went there for phd <laughs> one thing i i i realized in my journey is that it's not just the degree that is going to make a difference in your career it is also the place from where you get the degree if i would have done my phd at mku i wouldn't have reached this point to this point so, so when i went to napjr it of course gave me that exposure right i got several publications i got uh, fulbright i got uh, industrial and career boosting gold fellowship i got insa i got nasty i got etc etc and everything is hanging up up behind me but yes, this kind of thing wouldn't have i wouldn't have got if i continued maybe in a state university uh, mm -hmm. so yeah that is what you and i tell people that Uh, go for a national institute where funding is ample of course funding is ample right they have mm. you know of course they get a good amount of funds they have a very good infrastructure and whatever the fellowship or whatever uh, an opportunity comes the first information comes to such institutes so mm. those students will get uh, the information on such programs where they apply and uh, with the time these institutes have created a label so Uh, yeah that helps people in climbing up their career ladder so that worked very well for me and of course it was purely because of the support of dr manoj prasad who will be soon talking to you people on this platform yes. so you can ask the same question to him too <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh, okay sir my next question is that um, in the era of big data and artificial intelligence how do we uh, progress with uh, respective to plant research and its field application yeah in in, in research uh, this big data and artificial intelligence are already there but in field applications uh, i think they have not been used to the fullest for example uh, we still do not have an integrated platform like an online device or an app to inform farmers about disease attack or weather conditions mm. or soil health etc mm. another aspect which has tremendous tremendous scope is the predictive agricultural analytics where artificial mm. intelligence could be used to predict the art, optimal time for sowing updating the farmers about irrigation parameters application of fertilizers mm. and uh, apps, apps should also you know predict the uh, optimal harvest time because if it is going to rain tomorrow then the farmer should harvest today itself so those things we have seen many people or many farmers who go into loss because the the final day of his harvest it will rain and all the crop will fall 
so such things will be highly useful in in field where pro- progress has to be made actually yes definitely uh, sir my next question is that uh, according to you which sectors of plant science research and agriculture will prosper in the near future uh, let me split it up into two in agriculture and in research in research we are now using this integrated omics approaches previously we will we were focusing only on individual omics tools mm-hmm. we could see mitoc was purely on genomics but now we are realizing that okay working on our focusing on one particular aspect is not going to help or it's not going to give uh, a complete insight of what we are trying to address so we have to integrate different mm-hmm. approaches so integrated omics is now coming up and we are already uh, we already have newer technologies like speed breeding Uh, i am developing one chamber uh, in in my greenhouse which which actually has revolutionized the crop improvement programs and now even seed companies are using speed breeding approach to produce uh, quality seeds in shorter duration uh, papers are coming up on coupling this transient technology with speed breeding and the speed breeding mm. and these are few prospective areas which i believe that would come up well in the future to address this food and nutritional insecurities and in agriculture if you ask we again and again talk about this mainstreaming and replaced crops if you could see rice wheat and uh, sorry rice wheat and uh, maize these three constitute are uh, these three crops serve 50% of the world population where our world population is 7.7 billion so there is a huge inequality between the available crops and the population or numbers to be fed so that is where we always talk about this un- mainstreaming this entry replaced crops because many of crops are edible our archaeological evidences shows that approximately 7000 crops were cultivated by our ancestors hmm. which now got narrowed down into 3 plus another 12 which along with five animal species which is cater- catering 90% of the world population hmm. so now people are slowly getting awareness and this mainstreaming under utilized crops or research in under utilized crops is slowly gaining this momentum mm-hmm. and we have also started realizing that these species might be not just millets there are several legumes that are under utilized tubers mm-hmm. leafy vegetables etc etc these have the potential to tackle this hunger and malnutrition and that is what is coming up uh, in 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 these days mm-hmm. okay so uh sir uh, my final uh, last question is that uh, what would you advise to the young research fellows out there how they could uh, make their careers better or how they could cope up with the pressures of research yeah first and foremost thing which i tell to a researcher is that they should have awareness awareness in professional front and awareness in personal front in professional front they should be aware of what is going on in the current field or in their field of research what is going to come up next and in what speed we are working compared to what is being done by our competitive labs or uh, collaborative mm-hmm. labs mm-hmm. that comparison will keep us motivated that comparison will make us run because when i entered for phd the first thing one of us told me was phd is not a journey it's a race if okay. you have to run fast to achieve to get the degree fast so that is where we started running and we ended up here right so that fetched us papers let it be research paper review articles book chapters popular articles uh, a student should not hesitate to write here writing and research should go you know hand, hand to hand, hand. Mm-hmm. so that one thing everybody should realize coping up with pressure is like i mean uh, i don't know what kind of pressure people get but in our lab i mean maybe particularly me i never felt any pressure because i do my job that's it right phd is an objective based research it's not a timing based research your supervisor will give you three objectives which you have to complete for preparing your dissertation so if you if you finish up your objectives fast you will submit fast if you don't finish you will be late so that is what is uh, happening yeah pressure will be there in terms of publication pressure will be there in terms of this writing and these things so one has to be you know uh, competent enough to tackle those things and personal friend the awareness is like i mean there are lots of fundings and fellowship opportunities available 
may it be national level may it be in international level even state level you know several state governments like the kerala state they have a kerala science and technology council or something like that they give some uh, you know benefits or fellowships or funding opportunities for researchers early career researchers and also that awareness is very much important because those things should be added in your cv that makes your cv cv strong not just completing a phd with one or two papers mm-hmm. is going to help you so and that is what like i mean to make a difference in the cv uh, they should work and they should have this complete awareness awareness is the first and foremost thing a student should have in this regard yeah yes sir um, so thank you sir um, i'm sure many of our viewers the young viewers who are pursuing phd they, they got many useful tips and uh, advice from you thank you sir it has been a wonderful opportunity for us to have you here um, thank you so much thank i you. hope we will see you again in the future soon thank you thank you